welcome again. It's a great pleasure uh, to introduce my classmate, uh, Professor James McKernan, FRS, uh, who will speak about toroidal notifications. <laughs> so, so we have a change of plan on the last talk. So, so there is a train at one seventeen. So maybe people would want to catch that train. So we should start twelve uh, ten the next talk, so that we, we end at one ten. There will be plenty of time to get to the train station. <laughs> 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 Plenty of time, and I remind you to fill the online feedback because we actually do quote good feedback on a grant application. It makes a big difference. Okay, so um, uh, like thank the organizers for inviting me to give to give a talk. Um, I wanted to start with a with a, with a very vague principle, which um, you may not like, but. Uh, very simple. So, uh, sorry, varieties are um, everywhere nets. <laughs> whatever, that's, whatever that means. <laughs> All right, before I, I'm very embarrassed to say that I gave this talk a couple of weeks ago and I forgot to mention this is joint work with Paolo Cuscini. So, let me say right at the beginning this is joint work with Paolo Cuscini. Okay, so I'm going to start by. Uh, Defining the, the, the thing I'm, I'm interested in, mainly in this talk, um, so there's a lot of discrepancies, so I should tell you what that is right off the bat. So, I apologize, I'm going to give you a stream of definitions, but we'll stop soon. Okay, so I'll introduce a, a long pair, so that by that I just mean that X is a normal variety. So I'm interested in things that are singular, so I, you know, I need to work. <coughs> I can't say smooth or anything like that. So, uh, delta will be affected, its coefficients will be non negative. Uh, just to be fancy, well, I want to allow an R divisor, you can think a Q divisor, fractional coefficients, but, but certainly not necessarily integral. And then, uh, I want to pull back, so I, I want to say that uh, K to the is R Cartier. If, if I had Q coefficients, I could say R Q Cartier. So, so this is an R linear combination of Cartier devices. Okay. And I want to compute log discrepancy, so what, what I do is I take a log resolution. Log resolution. So again, just be careful. Y, Y, X. Uh, so Y will be, I mean, so pi is birational projected. Y is smooth. Um, strict transform delta, which I'll call um, strict transform delta tilde or delta. So that would just be strict transform component by component and then coefficient by coefficient and then and exceptional. Well, of course, I want that to be has simple number process. So, every component of the strip transformer and of the circular divisor, like this is a divisor, uh, it's smooth and they intersect as transversely as they possibly can. Okay, so under those circumstances, I can compare, well, a priori k of x and k of y, but I'm carrying delta with me, so I'm going to compare these two guys, and then I'm just going to throw in the, the sum of the exceptionals with all the coefficient 1, because I'm going to find the log discrepancy, and then finally the thing I'm interested in is these numbers AI. Okay, and so AI is AX delta EI, um, so that's the log discrepancy of X of E, I with respect to X delta. Um, A will be the infimum over all I and Y of the AI. That's the log discrepancy of 
X delta. <clears throat> and because I'll need it a bit later, you can modify these things a little bit. You can be a little bit more fanciful. First of all, you could take the in, you could, if you give me a, a closed subset of X, typically a point, you could look at the kind of restriction of what you get by taking only those exceptional divisors whose center is V. So this is the infimum of the AI of what I Y, but the center of V is V. So it maps, I mean, it, the generic point of V maps the generic point of V. So uh, the, the key case is when, when, when V is a point. So I just worry about those exceptional divisors that land in the point. That's, I modify that, a prime. And the other thing I want to say is that, uh, of course, things are bad if uh, AI is less than zero. So the sort of borderline case, so EI is a log canonical place to start you. If AI is equal to zero, so that's log discrepancy zero, and uh, the locus, the non-KLT locus, is the image of the log particle places. And that'll be some theoretically close subset of X where the singularities are bad, but not too bad. Okay, so I'll meet that a little bit later. But be be before we get there, so I wanted to state one conjecture. Conjecture A. And this is sort of the, the motivation for what I want to talk about today. So I want to fix the dimension. And I want to fix two subsets. I so I will be a coefficient set, and J will be a set of log discrepancies. So log stream is only interesting if it's non-negative. And I want them to both satisfy DCC. So there's no infinite decreasing chain in either of them. So, you know, typical example would be to take, if I can do this, i equals n minus 1 over n, 1 half, 2 thirds, 3 quarters. That satisfies DCC. I have infinite increasing sequences, but no infinite decreasing sequences. Okay, so then the conjecture says there exists i0, J0, finite, subsets of i and j basically, such that if x delta is a log pair, uh, the log discrepancy, let's say based on the point, I suppose, let's say that, is in, is in i. So I'm thinking of a journal, I'm only interested in singularity, so I'm at a journal singularity, let's say about a point p. Uh, J, thank you. So the, if the log discrepancy belongs to J, and the coefficients of delta belong to I, then what I want to say is that the log discrepancy is in fact in, in, in J0, and the coefficients of delta belong to I0. So I place restrictions on both. I mean, there's an input that says I place restrictions on both the log discrepancy and the coefficients, and the output says the same thing. Yes, 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 yes. Otherwise, yes. Otherwise, I mean, the log discrepancy is a continuous linear, basically linear function of the it's continuous function of the input. So if you didn't fix. If you didn't fix i, you'd just continuously vary it. No way would you get DCC. <coughs> okay, so what is what was a bad point? It's just it's just the germ of the singularity. The it's the point we're interested in. Okay, so let me point out there are two special pieces of this conjecture. 
The part of what's interesting is that it, this conjecture joins together the following two conjectures. So let's suppose that you ignore J0. I mean that. I mean, I mean, or A by zero. Sorry. Um, so this is Shapurov's conjecture on ACC <laughs> for the block discrepancy. So I, I fix the coefficients of delta to lie in some set, but I don't require the coefficients of delta to belong to I zero as a conclusion. But I do, I do conclude that the, the log discrepancy satisfies, I mean, it belongs to the um, finite set, so, in other words, I can never construct an infinite sequence of increasing log discrepancies. That's one case. The other case would be to take another extreme case, would be to take fixed i to be a singleton set. Uh, so this is sort of if you know what. So this is Shapiro's conjecture. Uh, well, ACC for the A-lock and O-lock threshold. Um, you know what conjecture is now. <laughs> um, so, so, special case would be to take A equals zero, so that log discrepancy zero. Um, and then this will be ACC for the lock line threshold. Um, so of course I proved that a couple years ago. With taking the suit. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Thank you. It's in my I's and J's. Yes, 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 of course. So I, I fix the log, log discrepancy to be a, a fixed amount. Then I can conclude that, that there's no, the only way I can get that is by taking the coefficients to be in a finite set. Okay. So let me say a couple of things about this. So the interest and this conjecture is that uh, 1, so ACC for the log discrepancy, plus lower semi-continuity. <coughs> so what does that say? That says that <coughs> if you... Uh, where are we? If, if, you, if you take B to be a point, and you move the point around, then the log discrepancy can only drop down. As, as, as you degenerate, log discrepancies get worse. In other words, the log, I mean, philosophically, this should be a measure of how singular x delta is. So, if that's really the case, let no show which semi continuity should, should, should be true, because as you vary p around, you expect now and again for the variety to get more singular, I mean, the point, you know, more, the more singular, the log discrepancy to throw down. So that's what lower semi continuity is. So, it's a very, um, Intuitively convincing sort of conjecture, but it's a, it's a very hard conjecture. But anyway, the two of these guys together imply a termination field. So that's, this is a really beautiful argument from Shikuro, which I won't talk about today, but just wanted to point out. Okay. So, so now what I like about this conjecture, as I say, is it combines these two things, and in fact there's some work already, so Baker and Shakura observed essentially, so I'm cheating a little bit, but one implies two. If you have ACC for the log discrepancy, then you have ACC for the A log threshold. And then again, very, very roughly, uh, this is again a cheat, but she hopefully she will allow me. Um, the, the basically two implies, um, as far as we, well, this is, a, I mean, this is a cheap little bit. Conjecture A, at least in the case when, such, when, when, when J is a subset of zero one. Okay, 
Okay, so what do we know about these conjectures? So there are two cases. So Alexeyev proved um, one holds if n equals two. And as I say, that almost certainly means that he proved conjecture A, really. Um, and then the other result that I know, which is true in all dimensions, is due to Borisov and Lawrence. Um, so one holds if x delta is toric. So basically, x is a toric variety and, and delta to something invariant about this. And for the most part, you can ignore delta for that, for that statement. Um, and then the, the key case is where, I mean, that, I mean, since we're working locally, x toric means basically x is a, you can assume it's factorial, so it's simplicial, so you can assume it's a quotient singularity of, by, you know, <coughs> cn modulo a finite abelian group, and then just the way you compute those discrepancies, you can in fact assume it's cn modulo a, a cyclic group, and then that's, the result is just purely combinatorial. Borisov gave the proof. Um, for, for, he, he gave, gave, gave two proofs, one where he sort of formed it in those terms, and then he realized that was this paper of Lawrence which made the proof much, much easier, and then um, it's essentially stated in Lawrence's paper. But uh, Lawrence is not now a very job with so. Oh, yes, yes, yes. N is the dimension, yes. So, yes. N is the dimension. Yeah. Thank you. His name is Jim Lawrence. <laughs> He's a professor in some small college in New Hampshire. I'm not sure you know. He's a number theorist. And it's, it's, it's a purely combinatorial, it's just a geometry of numbers argument. It's very, very beautiful argument. It's, it appeared in an applied mathematics paper journal. But it's a, it's a glorious argument. I mean, it sort of implies this sort of old results of, it's a sort of very, now, these are results of Moria, but the classification of terminal uh, uh, and Morrison and uh, the classification of, you know, of quotient similarities, I mean, it's, you sort of see Lawrence's, it shows that there are simple cases, a version of his results. Okay, then there's one more thing that's uh, appeared very, very recently, the theorem due to our heater. Dimension three. So he, he does something the opposite. If, if J is contained with one infinity in conjecture, so his methods are quite different. They, they sort of use he uses jet jet spaces. This this this, this argument of um, the Fermat and um, starter and Ein. Okay. So, let me, um, so, the basic idea is that, you know, we, we only know this conjecture in this, in this, in, in all generality in, in one case, for the, um, for Torek. And, but, but there's this general principle that somehow, maybe that's enough, <laughs> if they're everywhere dense. So, let's see if we can, so, the idea is somehow to, to, to realize that. Okay, so let me, so, start with a stupid question. But it will be the warm up question. <laughs> so, given a log pair x delta, can we find um, y delta tilde plus e? So, again, this is the strict transform of delta, all the exceptional y's with the coefficient 1, the sum of the i's. Uh, sorry, can we find pi, sorry, such that y delta plus e is toroidal? So what I mean by that is it's locally about every point, it's torque, it looks, it, you know, some analytic coordinates about every point, different point by point, of course, it looks like a toroid variety. Okay, well the answer to this stupid question is, is yes, because you just take a log resolution. Okay. And 
Log, I mean, simple number crosses is, is toric because that locally looks like CN and a bunch of hyperplanes, and that's a toric variety. So, this, this was a bit of a stupid question. Um, but we can read. Well, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, almost more than 50 years after it was proved existed, is. Uh, but sure. Get to see a few of question, that's for sure. Um, okay, let's see. Um, oh, that's okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, so let me state a conjecture, although now I want to put it in inverted commas because I sort of realized that from, I sort of, as I said, I talked about this two, two weeks ago and I sort of realized that maybe I'm close to having the proof, not because I had any sort of insight, but because I realized that somebody else had worked on this very stuff. And so it's done a lot of the groundwork for, for us. So let me state it. Attach a word, but you'll sort of see what I mean. Because there are quite many faults. We'll see what I mean a little bit later. Uh, so, to be, to be careful, let's just fix R and N. Again, N will be the dimension. So, let's suppose that. Um, oh, I wanted to give you a little bit of notation. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's just. Um, so just a small amount of notation. So I'll be interested in a divisor to beta breaking from delta. Let me call this a name which is suggestive. So um, I'll call it a pro, although the technical word would be a complement. Uh, such that uh, x theta is not canonical, but not chaotic. <coughs> so the point is that, uh, I mean, I'm going to be interested in something with, you know, not discrepancy far away from zero, but I'm going to use my probe to sort of shine some light on a particular part of the singularity. So. I probe some of the singularity. I'm shining light on the log canonical, the, the, the non KLT loads, the, the non log, the not the log canonical loads. The image of the divisive coefficient one. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will, I will, I will. I will, I will. So, conjecture. Uh, so this would be finally false. Okay, so it's n and then r. So I'll have an x theta will be one of these probes. So I mean, I, I, it doesn't really relate. I mean, in the back of my mind, we're thinking about conjecture a, but. When, when you say the conjecture, <coughs> delta doesn't appear. So this guy will be uh, log canonical. Well, it doesn't mean it's, it's log canonical. It doesn't have to be not P or D, and it's easy. Um, so some fixed multiple of, of theta will be Cartier, let's say. So what I want is a map pi y to x like a log resolution, so it would be birational projective. Oh, I forgot it's a statement. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, that's what I just, as I started to write this, I realized I hadn't stated anything. Okay, so, so there exists t, only depending on n, an integer, of an integer, such that, given, so, Given this guy, there exists pi y to x. Um, so pi is by rational projective. Um, so 
So you do the same thing as you did before. You look at the strict transform of delta. You add in all the exceptionals. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Without my fee, let's say. So I want a bunch of things. I want uh, only extracts log discrepancy zero. Okay, what does that mean? So <laughs> I look at the exceptional divisors of y. I want them all to be log canonical places. I want them all to have log discrepancy zero because that's what a probe does. I only want. I can only. It only tells me information about those those divisors. Um, so, extract is the opposite of contract. So, I'll have been something on X and I extract divisors. Um, that's like saying on Y I contract divisors. Okay. And the key thing is that uh, pi only extracts or contracts with uh, less than or equal to T divisors. So there's a thing. Yes, I'm counting the dividers. I mean, you can assume that x is q factorial if you want to, so counting the dividers is. This is for all x dimension. Yes, exactly. The, the fixed dimension. Fixed dimension. So. And, 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 and why uh, B is, is toroidal. Yeah, interesting projection. <laughs> so, are you sure? No, I, I am only well, I, it's a little, oh, sorry, uh, about the generic point of every non KLT center, of every log canonical center. Yeah, there's a bunch of examples, and I've checked his examples, and all the ones I know. Because by, by the time we the lecture, you might have you might, you might a example. Um, so let me give you a, in, so in so if there is only a, if the I said the singular then the set has what that so for I said the singular if you did uh, isolated if, if, if no no uh, um, no I think so right I mean uh, I think it's more complicated than that hey, well let's let's just let's just go through it. Yeah. Uh, so in particular, for example, I mean this is a very uh, only find many of the, only find many yeah for example only find many log canonical places are irrational. I mean most t right because what's left is toroidal. So when they blow up anymore, it's it's rational. No, no, but I just at every non I I I, I there's a thing to, and I'm only worried about the non KLT centers. So if you block the Kalabiao, it becomes KLT. Yeah, okay, so blow it up. But you yeah. take it, I mean suppose it's, you, so you want to take a ton of the Kalabiao and make it not log uh, not KLT. So blow it up, what's left is KLT. So you're up. But it's not the yeah, But I just wanted to to worry about the every the generic point of every log canonical center. Uh, log center of what? Uh, of, of, sorry, of, of y. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, otherwise it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so let me do some examples. Because <laughs> otherwise, yeah. Um, 
Aí, ó. Qual? Ok, você vai ser o seguinte, não, posso falar? Sim. É, só o Okay, so you, 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 um, I'm not sure what the correct definition to it was. Is, is, do you need the every component to be simple normal person? You need to be um, normal, the toroidal? Yeah. I suspect even if, even if you don't... Like, with something that's actually the toroidal, we have sense. Yeah, okay, but even if you sort of try and ignore that dimension one less, I suspect it comes back and haunts you in high dimensions anyway. But let's, let's get to that. Um, okay, let's, let's do the case of a certain case of which you definitely... You guys are trying to do. So let me give you the class. So let's suppose that S is a, a KLT surface. Uh, so that's the same as saying it has processing left by the classification. And so let's look at the resolution graphs. So there are basically three, essentially three sort of possibilities. The resolution graph looks like this. So I draw a vertex for, for minimal resolution, for every, every curve. And I draw an edge if, if those two curves intersect. So of course I call this AN. But let me emphasize, these curves didn't have intercept potential minus two. It's not an AN singularity, you know, it's not a dual singularity. It's more, maybe more complicated. It's an arbitrary quotient singularity. But the thing is that this guy is torque. So, basically s equals zero will work for this guy. Uh, okay, so then, then there are two other ones. Two other possibilities. There is dn that looks like that. So this is a z2 quotient of a cyclic quad quotient. dn by the dihedral. And then of course there are the exception. Uh, so let me draw E6. But, you know, they all look very similar. And the exception, well, there's only quite many devices in the resolution graph, so I don't really care about many anyway, ways of the conjecture. Okay. So now what does theta look like? So, the typical theta would be, in this example, to take two curves, which I'll draw with black dots, and put them at either end. And then this would be on the minimal resolution. So downstairs, what you would say is that you've got a cyclic quotient singularity. It's toric, so it's a quotient C2 with the x-axis and the y-axis. And I just put in the x-axis and the y-axis. And those are the two curves I have. So this, this would be theta. And then if I do that, all of this becomes uh, the non-KLT loads, uh, not local places. So that's okay, I, don't, I still don't care because it's toric, it's toroidal, so I don't have to do anything. So here x equals zero. Uh, you mean t? Uh, t, t equals zero. Okay. So you don't actually go up. Don't need to do anything, right? The identity would be a... Would, 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 would you leave it like that? Yeah, sure. It's, it's, I'm very happy with that because, because then I can just apply, I can apply bar zero. So this case, I, if I take theta to be r equals 1, take theta to coefficient 1, the only thing I can do is, is add one component of coefficient 1 here, and then this block becomes uh, the non-KLT devices, the log canonical places. So this is just all classification of complements in dimension 2. And then what do you do when you extract this divisor? So the thing that's annoying me are these two minus two curves at the end. But if I extract this divisor, so maybe one way to say that is just to make it a solid dot, what's left, uh, these guys disappear, right? Because then what I see is two minus, two minus, no, two, two A1 singularities. 
and then a complicated chain from the rest, and then one divisor, but then that chain is exactly like this, so it's, it's toroidal, and S equals 1. So, so one step, I'm, I get the toroidal. And then, in 1678, I can say I'm done with the most eight steps. That <laughs> was really lazy. But in fact, there is only one thing. She could have observed that all these are exceptional in his, in his sense. So the only way to ever create a non-KLT center is to create one exceptional divisor. This is the obvious central vertex. And again, if I extract that, I'm done because there's nothing else to do. Right? There's no other, no other non-KLT center that I even have to think about it. So in the exceptional case, I'm done. So that's one rather nice thing about. Well, so it's, 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 yeah. Well, but she could have made a definition in all dimensions. Exceptional in, in, in any dimension means that no matter what theta you choose, no matter what r you choose, there is one non-exception divisor which is not here. So one step can be done. That's, yes, they are. Yes, yes, they are. I started the last of A, I, I, I used S, but then I realized T for toroidal, so maybe that was a mistake. Okay, then if you allow log canonical, but not KLT, like a chain of rational curves, then, you know, we, you get into arguments about, uh, should you extract two divisors with this one? So, Oh, and then there is, there's one other case, right? There's for log canonical, but not KLT. So here there's no, it looks like a DN singularity, but it's symmetric. Here there is no theta, but all of these are log canonical, but not KLT. So then I extract this guy and this guy. So, T equals 2, well, actually, so T equals 2. What's this here? And then that's basically it. I mean, isn't it? No other interesting cases. Okay, so let me make, um, let me give you some more evidence for conjecture. Um. So is it fair to say that the claim that any log canonical pair is approximable within two steps by a pair? Exactly. Is T will take the two over. Okay, so let's let's let, let's look at some more examples because you know it's a somewhat surprising objection to see it. <laughs> you know, I started thinking about getting this book and I sort of you know thinking about proving it, but you know, the fact that I'm thinking about proving it is not much evidence for you guys. <laughs> so maybe I should do some examples. Is there a, an easy example where you, where it's not low canonical somewhere, but that somewhere is not low canonical? Sorry, yes. So it's not toroidal somewhere, but that somewhere is not a full low canonical. What? I mean, your requirement is that it's <coughs> toroidal or the generic point of every local. Yes, yes, yes. Well, the, the, the example you can get. I, I, I didn't follow. What well, you just you just take something that's singular, but it's collapsed. Yeah. And let's just take just take a, a, a singular K3 service. They might have a bunch of them all. I mean, yeah. I'll be out unbounded. <laughs> but let's suppose the collapsed is unbounded, and uh, take take a corner of collapsed. Then, um, what I say is blow up, the, blow, blow up that guy. That's a, that's a local place. So I have to do that. But it's still singular. Because I don't know if it's something singular. But I, there are no more non concave places. So at the generic point, I'm happy. And I don't want to do any more than that. I mean, I, because that's, because that's, that, that's too hard. Okay, so, so let me make two statements which are contradictory. Statements. Number one, 
uh, key or T singularities, I mean, those are singularities with no large number of places. I mean, there's no, no discrepancy, no discrepancy bigger than zero, are simple, in, you know, in, a, in an informal way. And then, second statement is K of these singularities are complicated. So, what do I mean by this? Well, so, one way in which they simplify, which I think that uh, Shandor was talking about, is that if you take a, I don't know, I guess, also, though, if you take a log resolution, let's say, well, I guess I've been calling it pi up there, pi, and, and you look at the push forward of the structure sheet for y, that is, of course, oh, a, a, I mean, zero, i to zero. So, in some sense, uh, so these are, so these guys are rational, rational singularities, right? So, in some sense, the topology didn't, didn't change too, too much. When you go to a resolution. So in that sense, they're not, you know, KLT signatures are not so complicated. But in some sense, they're complicated. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, let me just show you how to generate lots of examples. So for example, if you take something X is KLT, and you take G to be a finite subset of the orthomorphism group of X, so finite, so X let Cn, for example, would be nice, and then G would be a sub quite subgroup of G L and C. Uh, then of course X mod G is KLT. So that gives you a lot of examples as on the as on the board. Um, it's sort of worse than that, though. All sorts of things. Um, so this is an example, old example of um, Observation of Kolar. So if you take f equals zero inside Cn, completely arbitrary. So it doesn't matter how singular. And you modify it just a little bit by saying look at xy plus f equals zero inside Cn plus two. So xy are new variables. Then in fact this is chaotic. So no matter how, how bad a singularity you start with in dimension n, it reappears in dimension n plus 2. But you see, it's, it's okay for the conjecture, because when you start blowing these things up, the, the tangent column, in fact, the global democracy of x is, is, is bigger than 2, the tangent column will be x, y um, equals 0, right? So you'll get, uh, which is, looks like, x, y equals 0 inside um, projective space, so to, to, to two hyperplanes intersecting transversely. So, you know, when you keep blowing up, it, it, you at least get rational, uh, rational dividers. Um, so there's no obvious way to structure the chance example that way. There was one other uh, example I wanted to point out again. again to the um, so, there's a fourfold, which is terminal, so a log discrepancy bigger than one, so it's not as nice as you like. It's factorial, or another way of saying it, the, the, fund, the local fundamental group is zero, so it's not a quotient, right? It's not a quotient of anything. And yet there's a risky tangent space at the singular point is as big as you please. So R, R. <coughs> so, nothing like the hypersurface singularity, nor nothing like the quotient singularity, and yet there's, in, in some sense, it's unbounded, right? Because there's, you know, the embedding dimension is, is arbitrary. So I looked at the construction. So the construction is that you sort of, in, you, the exceptional locus is a union of something like P3 and P2 bundle, P, P1 bundles. Over, over P2. And again, they're, in fact, toy varieties. So you kind of glue together a whole bunch of toy varieties in some complicated fashion, but at least it doesn't seem to mess up this conjecture. Um, and then there's a, 
Yeah. I say this this issue about taking caution singularities. It, it seems that this issue about being close to satoric is sort of like this issue here. Uh, you know, a DA in singularity is a is is a Z two quotient of of a cyclic singularity, and there's a similar conjecture in all dimensions that you do to say some, that somehow you can take something G which is not abelian, but it's very close to being abelian. Of course, as soon as it's abelian uh, and X is say smooth, then you're going to get something. Um, sorry. At least it's consistent with some other conjectures and other examples. Okay, so in what, in what remains, let me try to sketch why I believe it's actually true. Uh, erase this. So there's this uh, whole idea of looking at the, of the dual convex. And in particular, there's a paper by Bitane uh, and of course in uh, Q, which so the dual complex is a generalization of the thing I just erased, the, 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 the resolution graph. So um, so you, you take a, a vertex for every exceptional. Uh, you take uh, you you take an edge if two exceptional intersect. So you know to, to compute the dual complex, you, you, you take a resolution. So on on the resolution, you, you look to see if the, if, the, if the guys intersect, and then you know there's a two simplex, a triangle, yes, yes. three vertices intersect. Hmm? Yes, yes. Yeah, you, you, you know, hold on a second. Yeah, that's right. I mean, basically, I I can you can take a, a DLT modification. Or even better, you can take a Q DLT modification, which is a quotient of DLT, but that's exactly the same as to say it's toroidal at every non-DLT center. And then the, the, the result is that it doesn't matter what you do if you have isolated similarities, the underlying topology is unchanged. Uh, so, so the one very nice result they prove is that if x delta is KLT, then the dual complex is some, you know, CW complex, uh, is contractible. Oh, I forgot to say one thing, of course. <laughs> So, okay, but let me give you a, a guess. So you can find an economical, economical in the sense that you don't extract too many devices, uh, toroidal modification, pi, If you extract divisors on the boundary, I mean, which essentially means the weight can take as well. So, you know, that's what we did in the surface case. Because in the surface, there we are. I mean, you extracted, I mean, the, the, the dual complex looks like this. This is the divisor on the boundary. We extracted that. And then we extracted the up, we, then, then we had a theta, and then the other side we extracted this, we, we extracted the divisors on the boundary. And so, what do you mean on the boundary? In the case you are pointing at, there's no theta, so I. Uh, well, okay, so I do it. Every divisor is the theta. 
Yeah, okay, so I do it, I construct it one step at a time. So I extract one divisor, and then my graph becomes, then I get, uh, I, I, I get this picture. And then I say, well, okay, then I'm going to do this away from the object on the map. I, I want to do it that way because every time I extract, I kind of, the, I might pick up more than one singularity and then, you know, the dual complex simplifies quite a bit because of that and then you know, what's on the boundary changes step by step. Okay, but let me just... Um, Can you show us what you just wrote? Hmm? What, what you just wrote is different. Oh, 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 okay. Um, oh, okay. okay. So, I should say one thing, I should back up and explain why this has any chance of working whatsoever. Um, so, let me at least advertise one theorem. <laughs> um, this isn't logically necessary to talk about this, but I'd like to talk about one theorem up here. So this is a joint theorem with uh, Morgan Brown, Roberto Sivardi, and Uncle uh, Tom. Um, so, if x is proper, let's all project it if you like. x delta is log canonical. Let's suppose that minus kx plus delta is f, or if you like the American trivial, that would be a nice special case. Uh, let's suppose that delta is a sum of prime, prime divisors, and what I look at is the sum of the, sum of the di. So, so if, the sum of dr exceeds the dimension of x plus the Picard number minus 1, um, then x is current and all but one, sorry, uh, over one invariant one is a component. So that's the global result. Of course, we want a local result, which was proved a long, long time ago. It, it occurs in flipped in abundance. In chapter 17 or something. So it says the following. Uh, again, now, now, now you've got x delta, a germ of a singularity. Dimension A. So, uh, so again, I look at if the sum of the components of delta di, the sum of the coefficients is bigger than n minus 1, then x is toroidal, I mean, x is correct, I mean, it's quotient basically, been in quotient and, uh, again, all but one, blah, 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 all but one, one of delta is invariant. So the, the, the idea is to accumulate about every point you're interested in, a component, I mean, as many components and coefficients as one as you can, if you get, you know, for every isolated non-KLT center, if you get N, you're done. Because then you can apply this theorem. Um, and so then, you know, if, if, if the pitch, you know, if you've got some triangulation, Complicated triangulate. Let's, let's say we do the case of the threefold, so the underlying dual complex is a surface. I mean, now, my first step would be to extract this divisor, and then somehow what happens is that I break things a little bit, um, and then I get somehow a chain, and then I extract this divisor, and now, now I've got two, 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 and I have to do one more. It's, it's not too bad. Um, Maybe given the time that what I'll do is I'll, I'll stop there. I would like to give priority of questions to those who take the same answer. Like what? Other people can ask. Any questions? Thank you.
Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Very quickly, try and, maybe try and... So, you know, in the conjecture, basically, you want to check something that satisfies uh, ACC or BCC or, or, or whatever. So, you consider it, you have to have a sequence which violates. Okay? If you know there's a universal bound, then you know that you can go to some corona modification uh, where you extract a fixed number of divisors. Now, you know, when you, when you go here, those, those, the conditions of those divisors, since there's finitely many, you may, in the sequence, possibly such things, you may assume there's finitely many. And then you can take the limit of the coefficients of those divisors, because it's finite, because it's a fixed number. And you can ask yourself the question, are those coefficients increasing? If they're increasing, you're very happy, you just throw that into the set i. And if they're decreasing, you have to do some work, but at least you know exactly which divisor computes the long discrepancy. And you can attack that. And then, then you start using projector A, and you kind of, you reduce the case where it's stable, anyway. It's, yeah, that's, that's the rough deal of it. And then, of course, if you, if, if you can reduce the case Y, then it's toric and you're done. Quite, quite For the sake of, uh how about we uh, stay here, stand up, stretch, and we could be in two minutes or when Thaddeus is back. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>